continuing 6.6 .6 here, um, the rational zeros and finding all the rational zeros, we are now on example two. And with example two, we figured out that there are 32 different choices that I have to look at here. So it could take a long time to use the synthetic division to check all these out. So here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to jump the gun. I'm going to say negative 3 over 2. Hmm, I wonder how I know that negative 3 over 2 might work. So when I go to plug this in, here are all the coefficients. 10, negative 3, negative 29, 5, 12. And I go and plug in negative 3 halves. So that means I drop down at 10. 10 times negative 3 halves is negative 15. I add it to get negative 18. Negative 18 times negative 3 halves is 27. I add it to get negative 2. Negative 2 times negative 3 halves is 3. I'm going to get 8. 8 times negative 3 over 2 is negative 12, and I am going to get 0. Well, by golly, that seems to work. How in the world did that seem to work? Well, what this means is since I started at x to the fourth, this is now x cubed, squared, x, and 8. So I know that since this was negative 3, one of the equations is x plus 3 over 2. Then I also know that this is 10x cubed minus 18x squared minus 2x plus 18, or sorry, plus 8, because this started at x to the 4, so this is now x cubed. So when I'm looking at this right here, I know that they all have a 2 in common, so I take a 2 out of both of these terms. So I have the 2 on the outside, I have the x plus 3 halves, and then I have what's left over. Now, the problem is, can this be factored? Nope. So here's the crappy part of this. It can't be factored. So you know what I have to do? I have to redo the rational zeros theorem again. And I have to do it again because I don't know what goes into this to factor it. So guess what? I need to start over with this one. So I take the numbers up top, which are 4, and I can do 1, 2, and 4 because those are all the numbers that you can divide 4 by. All over, everything is divisible by 5. Well, at least there's only 1 and 5. So I took every single one, 1, 2, and 4, and divide them all by 1, because 1 is a factor of the leading coefficient. Then I took 1, 2, and 4, and I divided them by 5, because 5 is the only other thing you can divide 5 by. So I really only have 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12 different things to look at. Not too bad. At least that cuts it down. So still a lot. So try them out to see if they work. I'm going to guess that 4 over 5 works. So here is my coefficients 5, negative 9, negative 1, 4. And I use synthetic division. I bring down the 5. I get 4 when I multiply those two. Negative 9 times 4 is 5, or not times. And I add them together, I get negative 5. Negative 5 times 4 fifths is negative 4. I add those to get negative 5. Negative 5 times four-fifths is negative four. I add those to get zero. Oh, it works because there's a zero at the end. So I now know that this is because it started at cubed. This is x squared. So it's 5x squared minus 5x minus 5. I know that that, the opposite of positive four-fifths, is x minus four-fifths. So when I go and factor this, I can take a five out of every single one of those. So it's a five on the outside, x squared minus x minus one. Can I factor this? Nope. But because it's squared, we can at least use the quad formula. So let's check everything out. This was the first factor that I found, right? Remember, I pulled that out. I also pulled the 2 out from before. So there's a 2 I pulled out from before. This was the second one I found, x minus 4 fifths. Okay? And here's the 5 and the x squared minus x minus 1. Well, that 5 and 2 I can pull together. 5 times 2 is 10. Here's the x plus 3 has. Here's the x minus 4 fifths, and there is x squared minus x minus 1. So when I go to figure out what the answers are, I can solve that easily. That's negative 3 over 2. I can solve that easy. That's 4 fifths. And this, I need to use the quad to find out what the answer is. So negative 3 over 2, 4 fifths. And when I go and use the quadratic formula, I get 1 plus root 5 over 2 and 1 minus root 5 over 2. So there's my 1, 2, 3, 4 different answers. And the reason there's 4 answers Remember, it was x to the fourth when we started. So looking here at example three, it says you are designing a candle making kit. Each kit will contain 25 cubic inches of candle wax and a mold for making a model pyramid shape. Building at the Le Vieux Museum in Paris, France. 
you want the weight of the candle to be two inches less than the length of each side of the candle's square base. What should the dimensions of the candle be? Well, it says that the base is going to be x and the height is two less inches. So there it is, x times x times x minus two is the height. So you need to know the volume for a pyramid. So the formula for volume of a pyramid is one half times the area of the base times the height. So that means it's one third times length times width times height. Well, so it's one third times length, which is x times width, which is x times height, which is x minus two. So I filled everything in. So I also know because it says that this cubic inch candle wax can, is uh, 25 cubic inches. So that means V, the volume is 25. So basically I need to solve for X. So I can put all these X's together, X times X times another X, that's, uh, that's X squared. I can take that through to both of those. So uh, before I do that, let's get rid of the fractions because the fractions might be kind of uh, bad to deal with. So instead of one third, I'm going to multiply by the reciprocal on both sides, which is three over one. We get the threes to cancel out. So three times 25 is 75 equals x squared times x minus two. So I distribute that to get x cubed and negative two x, and I have a 75. So I minus 75 on both sides, and I have seven, or sorry, x cubed minus two x squared minus 75. And once again, trying to solve this x cubed minus 2x squared minus 75. I do not know an answer for this problem off the top of my head, and I do not know how to factor it. Therefore, when I go to solve this problem, I need to use synthetic division. There's a 1, there's a negative 2, there's 0 because there is no x and a negative 75. What are the possible combos? Well, remember you take the last number, which is 75, and divide it by the coefficient. So all of all everything that's divisible by 75 is 1, 3, 5, 15, 25, and 75. The leading coefficient is 1. So that's simple enough. I divide them all by 1. So I need to guess between 1, 3, 5, 15, 25, and 75 to see which one works to solve this. Well, let me take a random guess, shall I? 5, I guess, works. So I drop down the 1. 1 times 5 is 5. I add them together to get... 3. 3 times 5 is 15. I am together to get 15. 15 times 5 is 75. I am together to get 0. And guess what? It works. 5 was correct. I chose wisely. Positive 5 worked. So since we started with cubed, x cubed, this is 1x squared, right? So it's 1x squared plus 3x plus 15. And I know that x equals 5 is an answer. So that means that's x minus 5. I use the quad to solve that. So when I plug this in, that's my A, that's my B, that's my C. So negative 3 plus or minus the square root of 3 squared minus 4 times 1 times 15 all over 2 times 1. That's 9 minus 60. So that's negative 51. I'm already telling you that I'm going to end up getting an imaginary number because I have a negative underneath the root sign, right? So I end up with a, a negative, or I square root of 51. Well, I can't have a side length being an imaginary number. So if x equals 5 is an answer, and negative 3 plus or minus I root 51 over 2 is an answer, I can't have an answer with an I in it. So really, the only answer I have was 5. So there's your homework. Uh, it's just like 6.5, except you need to figure out, using the rational zero theorem, what you're uh, dividing each of those by um, and what works when you plug it in. So um, try those out. If you have any questions, please feel free to email me.